whole time at school, all my memories are yeah. focused around games yeah. and things I used to bring in, collectibles. Yeah. I was like big PlayStation 2. Really? Like had a lot of games. Oh like now you find them in charity shops and they're like 70p a pound. I remember Zelda on the Game Boy and also Pokemon. And some of those Pokemons are like so rare now, it's crazy. Some of them are actually worth a lot of money. My favorite, Mario, Donkey Kong, all day. Yes. Luigi. Yes. yes. Run in, jump. Get the star. I literally loved all of those things. So good. I wonder what we're going to get. <laughs> <laughs> Dead Stock is about that special piece that makes you go absolutely wild. There must be so many things out there hidden away, and people just don't know what they're worth. You've got to look at markets, car boot fairs, house clearances, anywhere you can. hoping that we get something amazing through the dead stock doors. You can make a decent amount of money from reselling from a few quid to thousands. Never seen someone get so excited over the labels. <laughs> I actually might have to buy this person. <laughs> Would you ever consider putting these up for auction? 55,000, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It makes me feel very nostalgic. I used to collect these from about nine, ten years old. Had shoe boxes full of them. Did you ever collect anything? No, did you? Well, yeah. We used to actually make our own top trumps. But we used to do, make ourselves into little characters. We'd have <laughs> ratings out of like hair or, you know, funniness. Do so you remember what yours was? Oh, I don't know. Probably really funny or something. <laughs> <laughs> really reminds me of my childhood. It was in the playgrounds, on TV, Game Boy games. It was everywhere. Hi. Hi. I'm Fee, nice, nice to meet you. I'm Reem, nice to meet you. So what have you brought with you today? I've got three Pokemon cards. Wow. Venusaur, Charizard and Blastoise. So Reem's walking in with these Pokemon cards. They're in absolutely mint condition. Have you always collected Pokemon cards? Yes. From about nine or ten, that's where all my pocket money went. I'd go down to the newsagents and buy a packet. Why Pokemon cards? It was just something that, like, in the playground, everyone would be, like, huddled around in little circles and swapping them, and it was just so much fun. You almost felt like a young entrepreneur going in. It was like a job, trying to swap and get what you thought was the new best card. Charizard was the one that everyone wanted. It was the coveted one. Charizard is definitely my favourite as well. <laughs> I had a Charizard. This was probably 15 years yeah. ago. An incredible card. I had a huge collection. I put them all into this folder, about 100, 150 of them, and it just disappeared. It was gone. It was my entire collection. It meant a lot to me. It's still quite painful to think about it now. Could have got lost or something like wow. that, or maybe stolen. I think maybe more stolen. So sorry to hear that. I still have a list of suspects of who could have taken it. And some of them include family members. <laughs> I'm not really quite sure. So this friend, because I used to talk about this folder all the time, got me these, which I think is Really, really lovely That's to replace so lovely of the ones that I lost. When I saw the cards, it just took me back to my youthhood in school, playing in the playground. I remember having those specific cards as well. So for me, it was just an absolute buzz. A few things I could say about these cards for a start. The first thing that interests me is they're actually in Japanese. They're also first edition, which is super rare. 1996 is when Pokemon came out. These cards are actually from 1996. And on top of that, these three Pokemon uh, I believe the first three Pokemon. So looking at Reem's card, they all had the star in the corner, which means they were really rare. So these cards have all got uh, PSA numbers on them. Do you know what it stands for? PSA basically is Professional Sports Authenticator, and they rate the condition of all cards. So this goes from Pokemon cards, they started with baseball cards. They'll grade them from one, being not good at all, to 10, being absolutely mint condition. We've got two nines and an eight. Wow. So this is basically almost in perfect condition. The PSA rating was like eight or nine out of 10. And she also had the Charizard. I looked and I was like, we're definitely under something super special. A rare card recently went for close to 55,000. Would you ever consider even putting these up for auction? 55,000, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not really sure if I'm going to sell them. But it would be really interesting to find out how much they were worth. I think I'm just going to make a snap decision. 
I can tell you now, these are two are going for around 80 to 100 pounds. Okay. This one's a little bit special. This one's going for around 360 pounds. What are you thinking now, now you know? I'm torn. I, I, it's kind of better than I thought. So you think auction? I'm swaying to yes. Yeah? <laughs> OK. Well, that's brilliant. It was really cool. I actually kind of made an on-the-spot decision to go to auction, just kind of came out. So <laughs> I think it's going to be quite fun. My parents always wanted me to work in the market trade. It was set in stone. There was nothing else I was really going to do. I'm a textile design student. I do knitwear and I resell vintage pieces, secondhand clothes, anything I can really get my hands on. I come from a bit of a wheeler dealer family. My mum and dad have worked in the antiques trade for as long as I can remember. My dad's a bit of a Dell boy. He's known in the trade for being a sneaky one, and he's actually got a nickname, which he's going to kill me for this, Slippery Pete. <laughs> when I was 15, my mum gave me a bit of tough love. She wouldn't give me any pocket money, so buying and selling, really, was my only option. I started looking for stock everywhere. Charity shops, car boots, marketplaces. There's not anywhere I wouldn't go to find the perfect gem. I'd sell it on to my friends, and that's where it all began for me. When I started to sell more, I got more interested in what was on trend. It wasn't just good for business, but it was more exciting for me. I know now when I found something special, just by touching things and feeling the quality, it's become second nature. One of the best items I ever found was a pair of amazing Moschino trousers for 20p. I've not found anything like it ever again. When I sell something to my customers, I love knowing that they know the history of the piece. So I put little notes in the packages so they know they've got something special. When I first started wearing it, there were so many people looking at me when you walked down the street. But I kind of like the feeling, because it's so different to anything else. I can't believe how much of the 2000s and 90s clothes have come back into fashion right now. Everything to do with like Gwen Stefani, Kate Moss. I used to feel particularly cool. It stood out a lot against everyone else. And it was at a time when I was establishing like my sense of style, and it helped me feel more individual in the clothes I was wearing. How are you? My How name is you Youth. Yeah, you all right? Nice to meet you, Ryan. <laughs> Good to meet you, Ryan. Oh. What have you brought with you today? I've got with me a uh, part of my vintage machino collection. Okay, wow. so a I've part got of it. Four items here out of 20. Just from taking a quick peek, this is exactly the type of stuff that I'm into that I personally collect as well. Ryan walks in and he's got this incredible four piece machino collection, and I'm just totally amazed at everything I see. Where did it all start then? I used to love uh, rooting around charity shops. My ex-girlfriend got me a pair of Machino jeans that I fell in love with. Wow. They were the matching uh, trousers to these. You still have them? I do still have them, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when I wear it, I feel like I'm wearing a piece of history. <laughs> I just have them all hung up in a row, all together in my flat, so I can look at them every night, just to the right of my bed. It's got the classic Moschino print pioneered in the 90s, because exactly. Franco Machino used to work for Versace, and that's how we got into this kind of style. Franco Machino was a designer who was popular in the 80s and 90s. I've always said Machino, but I've been told by many people that it's Moschino. He's all about big, loud prints, bold statements. Fashion is always fun with Moschino. I think that was part of his ethos. Moschino was always very, like, uh, positive in his affirmations. Hey. Make love, not war. Best things in life are free. Let's love each other. The slogans that he had on the pieces were kind of anti what was going on at the time. And for me, I really connected with that. Out of this lot, uh, the cats and dogs probably have to be my favourite. Incredible. Just because they're so different Can to everything look? else. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Such a bold print. Every piece is completely different as well. And they've all got a personality, haven't they? Some of the rarest prints of Moschino are pattern prints. So this is the newspaper print, the cat and dog print. They're so rare to get and really difficult to find. As you can see from the labels, this is very, very vintage sportswear, SPA. Never seen someone get so excited over the it's labels other than me. I actually might have to buy this. You <laughs>
Looking at the labels that Ryan has, they're all legit. You can tell by the material, the feel, also the stitching around the label. It's just amazing to see. This receipt shirt is something that I don't think I've ever seen before. Whoa. I'm not sure about you. So these are all individual receipts. Wow. That's just one of a kind, isn't I've it? I've never seen this one before. This is going to be one of the rarer ones, I think. It's a bit like collecting trading cards as a kid. You kind of just want to get as many as you can to show yeah, off to yeah, your yeah. mates. I was actually looking at um, this piece as well. I think, I think so. this is a fund that they used a lot later. 2000s plus. And you're interested in selling them all, potentially? Uh, these four I'd be looking to let go of, yeah. It's really good to see that people still have Moschino pieces. Ryan's just a perfect example of people that still collect, still really love the brand, and still are into the vintage stuff. The best thing to look for when you're rummaging through car boots, charity shops, are definitely scarves. A lot of people don't notice them, but things like this, bag of seven Moschino pieces, that's going to make you a lot of money. The reserve prices on this are 20 to 40 pounds. Even if you sold them for 10 pounds each, that's 70 quid. If you ever find anything like this, charity shops, car boots, make sure you get it before someone else does. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, if you're on your travels and you find a really great find like this, keep your cool, ask for a low price, because remember, loose lips sink ships. The moment you start getting excited and you tell your friends about it, it's the moment people are going to put the prices up and you do not want that competition when you want in these scarves, because they are a find. What does it look like? Wow, I'm loving all of this. I just really want these scarves. All of them are in, I'd say, good to great condition. These I put up for about 180, 200. How much did you buy them for? Quite a lot cheaper than that. <laughs> Let's leave it there. <laughs> for a bargain, that Right, pair. so you're up on that one. The cat and dog pants, I'd say, are round about the same, 180 to 200. I'd say for this shirt, it doesn't have the square label. I'd say this is a decent 80 quid. And then lastly, this piece, which I've never seen before, a very rare piece, maybe like 150, maybe even a little bit more. And we'll see, hopefully, if you can get any of them sold. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks well so done. much, Ryan. Really. Okay. 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 Thank you very much. Thanks, Ryan. Nice to see you. Well, that was really good. It was really great to meet youth and uh, share our own experiences with Machino. The valuation was a lot higher than I expected. But it's been great. What's your favourite piece? Uh, it has to be the receipt. But I cool. do love the message on there. I think that's I really lovely. This. I'm confident that he'll get good prices. If I saw Ryan's collection out there, I would definitely be snapping it up. How are you feeling about the Pokemon cards today? I'm really excited, actually. In terms of the reserve, um, I saw that you put 300 on the Charizard, yes. which is one of the rarest ones. The other two, Blastoise and Venusaur. So with the other two, I went a little bit higher than the valuation that you gave me. So I think I went 120. You're not wanting to let go? To be honest, I don't think I'd be too disappointed if they didn't sell, because I kind of want to hold on to them. <laughs> they mean a lot to me. Well, let's get in there and see what they go for. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Last chance. Sold. I know you need a toilet, but you look nervous. I'm just so excited right now. <laughs> there could be a Pokemon fanatic online right now watching. Or in this room. Know. Exactly. We're starting yeah. off with Blastoise. The first of three Pokemon cards. They're very special, these. They're Japanese 1996, starting the bidding at £70. 70. You can't tell crowd today. 70. Not today. <laughs> <laughs> We've still got another two more. We're going to see two what more. happens. No bids for Blastoise whatsoever. 24.76p, another Pokemon card. Again, starting the bidding at £70. £70. Pounds. <laughs> 70. It's a bargain. <laughs> Sorry. This is the rare one. We've got the Charizard. Charizard. 
And the last one, 2476. It's Charizard, he's amazing. 1996 Japanese hologram card. We'll start the bidding at 180. 180. Be, oh, 190. Here we go. 200. Something's happening. 210. 210. 220. Yeah, okay. 230. 230 pounds. That's quite a lot of money. Any more? 230 pounds. Not today. That's 230 close. quid. 230. So Charles Hard was doing so well, but it just fell at the last hurdle. The reserve was just too high. 230. That's a lot of money. It shows that they are worth something. At least all three stay together now. Exactly. Yeah, that is a yeah, very good so point. Charizard was getting bids. I was kind of like, no, you can't break them up. They have to stay together. I could see that really you kind of wanted them to come home with you. Reem loves her cards and I think she's super happy that she's going home with them. So it's a win-win. Thank you. For now you can go to the toilet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Bye. 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 The key to selling is to know your market and where to sell to reach that market. Ryan had four crazy Moschino pieces. My plan was to get those four pieces online. My aim is to get the best pictures and get the best descriptions so they definitely sell. I took all the time that I needed. They look great. How you doing, Fee? How are you doing? I'm good. I've got some stuff to show you. It's okay. about Ryan, right. the king of Moschino, remember? Oh, what a collection. So basically, there was four pieces that I put online. I reckon we can give him a call now. Yeah, let's you ready? do it. Let's see what he thinks. Let's do that. Hey! Hey, hey, hey! How are you doing? <laughs> How are you? So we've got some super good news about the pieces. They all sold apart from one item. The cat and dog jeans were the ones that sold the fastest. It was about 24 hours they sold them, which I couldn't believe. It just shows that people are so interested in them. Mm. They sold for 130 pounds. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're telling Ryan the prices and the look on his face says it all. You think he's really happy. The second one was the Moschino sports shirt, Ryan. That sold for 80. Perfect, yeah. Perfect, yeah. yeah. And the third one, was one of my favourites and definitely Fee's favourite, the newspaper Moschino jeans. They sold for 80. Great, yeah, they didn't even fit me. Did <laughs> <laughs> they not? I feel like they would have definitely fit me. I'm a bit jealous that they sold. <laughs> the only one that didn't sell is the receipt shirt, which right. is still here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, Ryan, in total, you made £290 on the three items that you sold online. How do you feel? That's really good, and I'm not too upset about the receipt shirt either. Oh, I'll definitely get some more wear out of that one, and then I can let it go whenever. Yeah! Absolutely. Ryan's reserve for his receipt shirt was 120, but I think he's really glad he got to keep it. Thanks so much for coming down to the warehouse, Ryan. Thank you very much for having me. Anytime, dude. Take care, See dude. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan was really happy overall. He's really excited to have the money and buy more Moschino.